Secondary missions should not be an afterthought. Hello and welcome to Epic Flail 40k Tactics. My name's Luke and this week I will be mostly talking about secondary missions and how bad my cold is. Apologies about the sound of my voice, please do bear with me. But I am soldiering on through as I'm really excited this week about the video topic, secondary missions. It's a really important part of 40k and scoring big in our games. And so by the end of this video, I'm hopeful that you'll have a renewed respect for secondary missions if you weren't already focused in on them. Let's get started. I'm going to break down a few things to help tactical or fixed the pros and cons and understanding how best to set yourself up for success. And speaking of which, that first big decision, tactical or fixed, is the crux of a good secondary game. This current era of pariah nexus, more often than not, it's the correct thing to do to choose tactical. Previously, many factions had great success zoning in on fixed. They were able to score teleport homers, the previous established locus, loci, plural. But if you've been playing a little while now, there's definitely been a break away from that previous strategy. Or more accurately, there's less reliability on the new missions to score those consistent points on fixed than there were at the last iterations of cards. And so the vast majority of players currently that's going to be adding the most value. Sure, if you've got a faction that you feel is going to reliably score fixed points and you can achieve those points, then more power to you. And if you've written a list and you're having success with that list, choosing fixed, share it with us in the comments. I'd love to see an army that's able to leverage fixed secondaries at the moment. They're very predictable. And I mean that in a good way. You're able to know what you're working toward every turn. And if you've got a reliable plan and strong board control, the fixed secondaries can be a great option in that sense because you enter the game knowing what your plan is and how you're going to approach each game and you can then design your list accordingly as if you think i'm going to be in certain places in the board and do certain actions to achieve certain fixed secondaries then you can tailor your list design with those objectives in mind the cons though and this is where some of the negative aspects start to creep in is that it's predictable in a bad sense because if i know an opponent is going to want to be in a certain part of the board for a certain fixed secondary i can try to prevent that from happening i can screen out or stage a nasty threat to be able to deal with what they're trying to do or prevent it from even happening in the first place it can also limit your options as well if you go into a fixed secondary but something goes wrong or your opponent does what i've just described you don't have a plan b other than trying to remove whatever your opponent has put there to prevent you from achieving your secondary missions and if you can't do that if you've come up against a difficult matchup or your opponent's staged particularly well making it difficult for you to be able to answer the threats that they've put there then your options become somewhat limited because you have to do a certain thing and there's no plan b you can decide not to play your opponent's game if they've blocked you or funneled you into a certain part of the board they know you want to be to do this the secondary you can decide okay you won't do that you won't play the game their way but then you're not going to be scoring and that's a quick way to start losing the game and it's even easier for our opponent to try and deny things if we take things like bring it down and they've got lots of vehicles or they could just decide not to expose those vehicles and just squeeze out a small win on the primary missions that's a thing that can be a real pain in the backside to try and deal with because essentially the fixed secondaries telegraph what we want to do and coupled with the changes to how certain points are scored with the new fixed secondaries it's a big part of the drawback of using them tactical secondaries on the other hand yeah, for those of us who love to gamble or i should probably say who thrive on being flexible and adaptable in our games these objectives are essentially random but there's a defined random element and some of them overlap for example secure no man's land and overwhelming force Oftentimes you'll need to destroy something on an objective in order to control it, to secure it. And so whilst those cards say very different things, it's a similar means for different ends. It's important to take a note of that defined random, as I'll elaborate on that in a bit. But some of the immediate pros of tactical secondaries are hidden in that randomness. And in particular, one of the biggest criticisms of the cards, which is, oh, I might draw a dud card or I haven't drawn particularly well. Well, at the end of your turn, you can get rid of ones that aren't going to score you points. And that is a huge advantage. If you're really reliant on CP or you're just a CP hungry faction, then having the option of chucking away dud cards to get CP is a great thing. And it's always nice to have the option. Most of the time you're going to want the points, but in scenarios where you can't score, at least you're getting a resource that you can leverage. 
tactical secondaries can help us to recover and create a sense of balance on the scoreboard. Whereas fixed, you're going to really feel every turn you miss and you don't have any scope to really recover that versus tactical where some cards score quite highly for certain things. So if you haven't scored well early on and you get some high scoring cards later, that helps to mitigate some of that loss. And obviously adaptability. The better we are to adapting to the changing tides of battle, then the more easily we'll be able to score points. And tactical secondaries really reward that skill, reward that ability to be able to adjust to things and change up game plans. One of the big downsides though is bad rules are a thing. Even with the ability to spend a CP in the command phase and discard cards at the end of your turn, biggest downside is we can get unlucky. Sometimes we'll get objectives that we can score but only score a couple of points on and then our opponents get ones that are really high at the right time and then leverage a better situation and get more points. And if that happens over two or three turns where we score a middling or low amount and our opponents consistently scoring a higher amount, it can feel like we're losing for reasons that are outside of our control. Other things to bear in mind is that with secondary missions, they require you to be able to have units to score them efficiently. The easiest example I can give of this is a faction like Imperial Knights. If you're taking Imperial Knights and you only have the big knights, then you're going to struggle to score points on secondaries because Pariah Nexus really rewards you for having those action monkeys, those smaller units to be able to run around and claim objectives. Because the last thing you want to be doing with your Imperial Knights, your big gunboats, is establishing locusts or... It's cleansing an objective. You want to be shooting all your guns at your opponents. I'd just like to take a moment to talk about Epic Flail HQ. If you're enjoying this kind of content, then there's even more over at Epic Flail HQ, where I upload members' content. In addition to that, we also do regular shows every week, from battle reports to the Monday podcast. There's multiple tier options, but for $2.99 a month, that gives you access to the Epic Flail Discord, which is growing month on month. We have a hobby section, a meme section, tactics, list writing advice, loads of stuff. And not only that, we've been streaming UKTC events. We've done Leeds and Sheffield so far this year, and UKTC Coventry is not that far away. And if you don't want to miss out on that, then get yourself subscribed to Epic Flail HQ. With Pariah Nexus favouring tactical objectives, how can we leverage these? We can plan. And if you're wondering how we plan for flexibility or mystery, this is where I bring us back to that planned randomness comment that I made earlier. If we're playing tactical, we don't know what we're going to draw. But we know what all the cards do. We know we need to be near objectives for overwhelming force or secure no man's land or extend battle lines. We know we need to be near board edges for recover assets, for containment. We know we need to be near our enemy's deployment zone for behind enemy lines, establish locus. We know we need to be near the middle of the board for establish locus, area denial. Right, even though we don't know which one of these things we're going to draw, we can still make plans for if we draw a range of those cards. So if we're setting up to be within a certain range of the middle, for example, of the board, that covers us in the eventuality we need to score something like Area Denial to be near the middle of the board, or Cleanse, or Secure No Man's Land, or Overwhelming Force, or Extend Battle Lines, if there's an objective in the middle. So actually we've covered six possible objective cards there just by being close to the middle but not exposing a unit completely. We could hide, we could stage, talked about staging before, behind a line of sight piece of terrain, uh, an expendable unit that we just have there, sat there waiting to be able to jump out and score any one of those six secondary cards out of the multiple different options that we've got that they're hiding near. And again, we could apply that same logic to if we move out to a hiding space outside on one flank, that might then cover us for, again, any one of the objective related ones, but also that could be giving us the chance to move into the other table quarter for engage on all fronts or being near for recover assets or containment. We're covering off those objectives by being intentional with how we're spacing out our unit. So that's what I mean when I say plan for a set amount of random. Yeah, you don't know what specific one you're going to get, but you can position a unit to be able to cover off multiple objectives. And that's really key. And that positioning, that can make the difference between you drawing a card and thinking, wow, I have no way of scoring containment this turn versus, yep, containment's super easy. I've got a unit here and a unit there. Done. I try to think of it as not setting up for every conceivable outcome that I could get on the card, but instead thinking of it as I'm positioning in a way that I'm not getting stung. I've covered the bases. I don't know what I'm going to do specifically until I draw the card, but 
I'm setting myself up for success. And as the game goes on and you have to commit units and move out of position, and then you hit a card that you can't score anymore, don't be afraid to discard. If we're playing tactical secondaries and we can't score, then that CP is going to be really valuable. Getting rid of a dud means it's not clogging your hand. I was burnt by sabotage before where I could score it, but then my opponent just deleted the unit that was going for sabotage. And then I stubbornly kept it, thinking I'll go for it again. Then my opponent again just killed the unit that was sabotaging. So not only did I not score it the first time, missing out on points on turn two, I only drew one other card and was stuck with a dud card in my hand on turn three. At that point, I should have discarded it. It's blanked what I've drawn for round three, and that's been enough damage. But by then stubbornly trying to go for it again, I lost out on points on turn three, and then again it was stuck rotting in my hand on turn four, meaning I only scored again one secondary in turn four, eventually discarded it turn four, accepting the fact that I wasn't going to be able to score it reliably at that point. But by that point, the damage had already been done. I'd lost out on, a, on scoring a secondary turns two, three, and four because I held on to it one turn longer than what I should have done. Unless you can always guarantee your unit that you're using to score sabotage, often it'll be actually later in the game as opposing forces has been dwindled a little bit. Draw sabotage turn five. Yeah, I can just score it in this random ruin. I'm, I'm sat in and my opponent's miles away, can't shoot it. So that's easy points for the final turn of the game. Of those scenarios, obviously, they'll come up, but in the early turns particularly, it's all too easy for our opponents to reach out and prevent you doing what you're trying to do. That's recover assets is another one as well. That can be quite difficult to stay alive long enough to be able to complete that action. So the point I'm making about cards stuck in your hand is an important one. If you're not able to score with those cards, then not only are they stopping you from scoring then, by not getting rid of it, you're risking not scoring again the following turn, which is really, really bad. It's not all about secondary scores, though. The most prominent way we win games of 40k is through the primary mission, and I go through some tips on how to score primary points effectively here. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching. Keep rolling those dice, and stay tuned for more.